Hello. Here we are, next video. We're going to lie down to start. I was going to get you standing up to start, but we'll do that in February, eh? So we'll lie down to start. Something to look forward to. So we'll start lying down. So as always, just check your space, that you've got enough space around. You've got a quiet bit of time. Um, I'm having messages from people sort of almost apologising for not doing the whole hour. Seriously, don't. Pick it up, put it down. If you decide that you're going to do a whole hour, there's a chance you won't do anything. So the warm-up, remember, is, is a little Pilates class all of its own. So if you just do the warm-up and you think, oh, I've got 20 minutes, I'll just do the warm-up bit. It's a good mobilising section and you might find at the end of the warm-up you want to do a bit more. So don't worry if you don't do the whole hour and don't feel you've got to apologise to me for that. I do an whole hour because that's what I'm here for. Right, so get yourself down, get your cushion, get your block, whatever you want to, so you feel comfortable, make sure you've got some water and lie yourself down. And just give your body just a minute or two to get comfortable. So maybe fidget the shoulders, the hips, legs bent or straight, whatever feels right for you. You might want to cushion underneath your head if your neck's feeling a little bit tight or, or if you feel a bit dizzy. Sometimes if your blood pressure's a little bit low, lying down can make you feel a bit dizzy. So cushion underneath your head will help with that. And breathe. And feel your ribs move as your lungs inflate and deflate. And start to feel your body just relax and soften slightly as you breathe. Try and stretch out along your mat so you've still got a nice natural curve in your lower back and in your neck. And then when you're ready, turning your head from left to right, just to mobilise the neck muscles. Check the shoulders, they might keep trying to bunch up around your ears, so just keep relaxing them down. I'll keep reminding you, but till you stick a veer in about your shoulders. Okay, bring your head back to centre. Bend your arm. I always start with my right arm because I'm right-handed, but whichever one you fancy. And just let your hand lightly rest on your shoulder if it reaches and circle your elbow around. So remember this one, we're just mobilising the shoulder joint. It might be creaky to start with, so just make the move a little bit smaller if you need to. But you're looking to do about four or five reps. And then you just reverse your circle. If that shoulder still feels tight and you want to just repeat that move again, fine. Otherwise, go into your straight arm. So still on the same arm, just straighten it and circle around with the arm straight. If that feels like you're pinching or it's uncomfortable, go back to the bent arm. You might have a little bit of impingement in that shoulder, so you don't want to make that worse. But if it feels comfortable, round you go. Try and keep the rib cage still. So a little squeeze of the abdominal muscles just to hold the rib cage level as the arm circles. Kind of like backstroke move. I'm always reluctant to say, to give it swimming names, because I know some of you are good swimmers and you know I'm not. All right, and then reverse your circle. So feel free to write in to tell me how my backstroke move wouldn't work actually in the water. <laughs> Just loosening that shoulder. Okay, and then we're going to move over to the other arm. So in my case, the left. Start with it bent again and circle round inside the shoulder. I just want to feel, see if you to feel that you're just loosening up around the side of the neck and inside the shoulder. Maybe feel the shoulder blade moving. So about four or five reps and then reverse it. And then you can decide whether you want to just make that move a little bit more challenging with a straight arm. But you've got to keep the rib cage level so you're not using your back muscles, you're using your shoulder and your arm muscles to move the arm around. Both directions. And then you've got another choice. So you can just repeat that whole thing again, or you can bring both arms. Both arms, it's more work. So you lift both hands up and bring both arms back to the side of your head, keeping the ribcage pulling down as you do it. And you're going to get a back stretch as well then and then circle both arms around. 
totally up to how you feel today. Just mind that you're not tensing into your neck or your shoulders, but taking both arms back and pulling the ribs down towards the hips is going to give you a nice back stretch. So you can stay there for a second or two if that feels good. You can have a slight bend in the elbow, you're going to have your arms locked out, but draw the shoulders down your back and your rib cage down towards your hips. So we're starting to work the upper spine. One more like this. And then we're going to go into the front of shoulders. So you're going to just lace the fingers together, hands underneath your hips. Now, if you have got any problems with this shoulder, you might be more comfortable with your arms out to the side, remember, just lying still, just to get that passive stretch in, in the chest muscles. But otherwise, hands underneath the head, and check out at first. You might need to lift and reset the shoulder so you don't feel that you're pinching anywhere, and just check where your elbows are sitting at the moment. And then bring them in towards your head, and then take them out towards the floor. And I want you to feel now that as your elbows go down towards the floor, your chest muscles just stretch a little bit and your shoulder blades pull together. And then when you bring the arms in, it's the opposite. And when this one feels easier and you're really thinking that when your elbows are out of pulling your shoulder blades down towards your hips and squeezing the shoulder blades together, so really engaging the upper back muscles. You can stay there for a breath or two if you want to. Again, moving the rib cage. And we're just resetting the shoulders. Nice one if you've been sat a lot. The weather's been rubbish, so you haven't had a lot of choice but to sit indoors. So it might be all tight around the shoulders and the neck. So it's a good reset. Unless you might have been out sledding, I don't know, I'm making judgment to you. You might have been out sledding. I haven't. <laughs> I thought a &E might be busy enough without me turning up with a broken shoulder. Good. And then just to get into the shoulder itself. So elbows on the floor, fingertips facing up. You've got a choice now. You can do one arm at a time. So your elbow stays on the floor and you move the hand backwards and forwards. And you're just trying to rotate this, the rotator cuff in the shoulder. So it's up to you, you can do one arm at a time, and that's quite useful to turn your head and just watch that arm. Just gives you a little bit more information about what's going on. Or you can do both arms together, in which case you will keep your head neutral up towards the ceiling. But try not to flap. I see this all the time, people think, I've got to touch the floor, so they're just actually rotating at the wrist. If you keep your hand and your wrist straight, you lose that information about the floor. So your brain still thinks you've got to work. As soon as you touch the floor with your fingers, your brain goes, oh, we're finished. If you keep your hands straight and your wrist straight and you haven't touched the floor, then your brain knows there's still some work to do in that shoulder. So you'll, you'll get more movement. Just mind when you bring the hands, the palm down towards the floor, that you don't force the shoulder off the floor underneath you. Because we're trying to rotate in the shoulder joint here. If you're finding now that you've done quite a bit of warm up on the shoulder and one side is still not, not got as much range as the other, I would work on that one on its own now or maybe a little bit later on that that shoulder's a little bit tight and needs a bit more work. Otherwise you're going to keep getting more and more of an imbalance. Okay, so that's the shoulders loosened, hopefully, and then we'll move on to the centre and the lower back. So arms out to the side, palms facing up. Your thumbs about level with the top of your shoulders. It can be lower than that, but you don't want to be in a sort of a, a cross of star shape. So get your shoulders comfy, bend your knees, bring your knees and feet together and twist. So now we're mobilising around the centre of the spine. So we're trying to keep the shoulders still and move the hips. We'll do a harder version of this later in the class, something to look forward to. So it's that ability to rotate half of your body. Turn your head and look away if you want to, so a little bit more neck work. Try and stack your feet one on top of the other. 
because the weight then of your top leg will encourage your hips to come over a bit further. Remember, we're trying to tilt the pelvis up and over and not the shoulder. So we're getting half of our body facing one way. And add the leg straighten on if you want. It makes the top leg heavier and helps you come over a bit further. Actually, I'm going to get this side in just a bit. Over a bit further. If that top leg, remember sometimes this top, these legs are heavy, and sometimes the top leg can, in, can pinch into the groin, into the inside of the hip. So just lift the leg a little bit higher and use your bone muscle to hold the leg up. And it will just stop the leg pressing down into the inside of the hip. Push your foot away, pull your toes towards your knee and push the sole of your foot away and you'll find you twist a little bit further. Sink the opposite shoulder into the floor. Hopefully you start to find that you don't move quite as quick. Once you start to loosen up, you naturally hold these moves for just that little bit longer. You can focus on it and make it a deliberate hold for a breath in and out if you want to. Depends how you feel. In a warm your room is. If your warm's cold, you're not inclined to stay in one position for long because everything tightens up. So it depends how warm you've got your house. Or if you're doing it in the garden, with our fresco pilates, I don't know where you are. <laughs> All right, now we're just going to do a little bit of stretch around the lower back. Anybody with any hip replacement, this isn't for you because we're going to cross one leg over the other and you know you're not supposed to do that. <coughs> so you can stay with what we've done before, either with the feet down and twisting or straightening that top leg. But the rest of you, if you want, cross one leg over the top of the other, don't matter which one, and now twist. And that's nice just for loosening around the back of the hip. You're crossing at the knee. Sometimes people tend to just cross at the ankle. That's fine as long as you can feel some work going on around the back of the hip. But if not, bring the knees together. Quite nice if you've got any sciatica. It just stretches from around that sciatic nerve. And change legs when you fancy. Make sure your feet are rocking from side to side rather than twisting into your ankle. You might feel these side abdominals just around that curve in your hip. They're working. Those are the muscles that get you to twist. So we're getting a little bit of oblique work going on while we're at it. Okay, uncross your legs, relax the shoulders, and then we're going to straighten the legs. So you're going to slide one leg out, get it nice and straight, and feel that quick stretch in the front of the hip. Keep the legs straight, Bring the opposite arm up to the ceiling and back to the side of your head. Now square your shoulders and your ribs. This straight leg that's along the floor, tense it and just lift it slightly off the mat. So you've got one leg and opposite arm out and then you're going to circle your wrist and circle your ankle. Use your thigh muscles to hold this leg off the floor. I don't want you to feel it in your lower back. If you are feeling it in your lower back and you tense the leg as much as you can, then the leg muscles aren't quite up to it today, so put the foot back to the floor and circle there instead. Okay, you're going to bring that arm and leg back in, so that foot back on the floor, arm down by your side, and we'll do the other side. So you straighten the leg out first, leave it there, lift the opposite arm up and bring it back, so you're pointing at the wall behind you. Square your shoulders and your ribs, tense the thigh muscle on this straight leg and lift it just off the floor and circle your hand and your foot, so you're rotating into your wrist and your ankle. Use your leg muscle, leg muscles, your quads to hold this leg up. You might want to push down slightly on your other foot, so get your bum muscles on that side working as well. I'm going to do that all again. So bring that arm and leg back in, square your hips, shoulders, repeat on the other side. So straighten the leg, opposite arm up and back, square your shoulders and your ribs, tense the thigh and pull the foot off the floor, Press down into your other foot if you need to for a bit of extra help and then circle hand and foot. Just check on your second go that you are keeping the leg and the arm still. The rotation comes from the end of the joint, from the wrist and the ankle, not the shoulder and the hip. And this leg's going to feel a bit heavier now. You're going to feel it in the leg. 
push down a little bit on the other foot if you need for a bit more help. Bring that arm and leg back in. Last side, so straighten the leg, lift the arm up and back, square the shoulders and the ribs, tense and lift the leg, circle away. So right at the end of those limbs, right at the ankle and the wrist, shoulders are square, pressing down into your other foot for a bit more support if you need to. Okay, have a good old stretch out. Lengthen the body. Bring your arms back down by your sides or give your shoulders a rest. Keep your right leg straight along the floor. Bend your left leg and bring your foot towards your bum. Still got your foot on the floor at this stage. And then lift your foot off the floor and let your thigh muscles pull that knee towards you. And then when you can reach, just rest, loop your fingers around the back of your knee, just to help you draw the leg in. But try and keep a curve in your back. So the straight leg, gently press down into your bum, thigh and calf, wherever you're touching the floor, and keep that leg down. Square your hips up and keep a curve in your back. So really use your thigh muscles to pull that leg in, rather than tilting your pelvis back. You can do a few more ankle circles if you want to while you hold this stretch. Relax the shoulders. The arms aren't doing anything. Your biceps should not be contracted hard. It's not an arm exercise. And then we change legs. So straighten the left leg out, get it flat to the floor, get your hips square, bend and slide your right foot in, and then lift it. And really think about using these front thigh muscles to pull the knee towards you, and then reach with your hand. Press down into the base of your spine to keep the curve in your back as you draw the knee in. Relax the shoulders. Press that left leg down into the floor. And while you're lying there, if you want to, you can circle your foot. But I want you to really think, sometimes people go quite passive, they just kind of... But try and think about using your thigh muscles to bring the leg in and keep a curve in your back. What you're trying to do is increase that stride length when you're walking so we're stretching the hamstrings on the bent leg hip flexors on the on the straight leg so we can take nice big strides you can do that all again so straighten the right leg bend and lift and draw in the left leg press down into the base of the spine and keep the curve in your back and circle your foot if you fancy you don't have to if that distracts you from the main stretch, because you've already done your ankle already. So I want you to feel a bit of stretch on the back of the bent leg, feel a stretch on the front of the straight leg, natural curve in your back, shoulders down. Change legs last time. Bring in. Relax the shoulders. Think about using those front thigh muscles to pull the leg towards your belly. Splash it and then relax. Let me do the inside and outside of the hips. So have your feet wide and your knees wide. Give the leggings a bit of a, a stretch. Hip replacements again, you're going to lie still because this is internal rotation and we don't want too much mobility in that hip joint. The rest of you, you're going to, you're, so hip replacement, you're going to stay still. The rest of you, you're going to rotate. So your legs are moving from side to side. Your feet are rolling from inside edge to outside edge. Your shoulders are staying down on the floor. So your hips are lifting just a little bit off the floor, a little bit of rotation. But I want you to really think about moving your legs inside those, so your femur inside that hip joint, rolling. Loosened around the hip. Let your leg go nice and heavy as it rolls towards the mat. Again, you might feel it in those muscles around the front of the hip bone there, that crescent, because they're the muscles that are twisting you. Smash it. And then bring the soles of the feet together and let the knees fall out. You can do this if you've got hip replacement as well because it's external rotation, it's fine. Now, 
If this feels a little bit tight, if you can feel it, those muscles are pulling and resisting the move, what I would do instead is starting with your knees facing up, just one at a time, move one leg out and back in, just to start to loosen. If those are very tight, it can feel a bit uncomfortable at first. But when that feels looser, soles of the feet together, let the knees separate. You can put your hands underneath you into that arch of your back if that feels a bit more supportive while you're there. And you can clench and release your bum muscles. That might help, just to get these inner thigh muscles to stretch. <laughs> That was barely making that disgusting noise. <laughs> Can't quite see. He's got his leg hanging out, having a good stretch, but he's not. He's not in camera shot. He will be later, I'm sure. So hopefully, these inner thigh muscles are just starting to loosen a little bit. Okay, and then. If you're comfortable doing so, draw the knees in towards the chest, wrap the arms around the front or back of the legs. If you're not happy in this position, and there's some people it just doesn't suit you, if, it's no point doing a move that doesn't suit you, you'll just be uncomfortable. Feet on the floor instead and let the pelvis just gently rock. And just feel that curve in your back, just gently stretching and, and tightening as you move backwards and forwards. Otherwise, knees into the chest and you're taking that curve out now. So just... As you bring the knees in towards you, you might feel your tailbone actually lift off the floor slightly, relax the shoulders. And this is just stretching the lower back a little bit. When we're sitting, all our weight sits in that part of the spine, so it's just releasing all that tension. And if you want to, hands at the back of those knees and just let your legs rock forward and back a little bit. They're only going to go arm's length because you're holding on, so you're not going to go too far, but you can find all those knots right down to the base of the spine, all those knots and tight bits and you can just massage them out and you can go round in a circle and massage around the lower spine if you want to or you can just lie still, whatever you fancy. Okay, feet down, have a good stretch. So this might be the time where you think, you know, I've got to go and, I don't know, feed the cat or defrost the day. I don't know what you might have to do later or the rest of the day. And so this might be where you leave it, but at least you've done some work. Otherwise, you might be feeling a little bit snug because you're here for the rest. So if you are, we're going to start supine strength work. So we're going to start with our knee folds. You might just change your mind now. So relax the shoulders, lock underneath your head if you want to. Feet flat on the floor, toes pointing forward, knees about hip distance apart. Now I need you to keep this pelvis really level, so a straight line down the front. When you're ready, lift your right foot off the floor. You want your thigh vertical to the floor, your shin horizontal, parallel to the floor. Hold it for five seconds. Zipped up in the pelvis, relaxed in the shoulders. So a slow count to five. Then that foot goes to the floor and without wobbling, the weight goes onto that foot, off the other foot, and the other foot lifts instead. And that leg stays in knee fold for five seconds. And I know a lot of you are able to come to double knee fold, but if you do a few at single knee fold, even though you know you can do double knee fold, the benefit of single knee fold is when you lift one leg and hold it, you're building up that strength to stop your pelvis rocking from side to side when you're walking. So it's good for your lower back. So really think about that transition as one leg goes down and the other leg prepares and lifts up that you don't drop on that one side. So those of you who are going to in a minute come to double knee fold, your work on this one is the transfer from right to left rather than focusing on the hold. So this pelvis these front abdominal muscles that I talked about as feeling working, these side ones that twist us, they also stabilise us. So you might be feeling that working just around that crescent in your hip. Okay, so you've got a choice then. You can have a stretch out, have a rest, keep repeating the single one, or you can come to the double one. So you bring the one leg up like you just did, and you can tilt the pelvis back slightly to reduce the curve in your back, if that feels more comfortable. And then without pushing your belly out, you float the other leg up. 
So now, because we've got both legs off the floor, these abdominal muscles are having to work much harder to hold the weight of two legs. Check your shoulders are relaxed. And then one at a time, feet back to the floor. Take a breath, regroup, do it again. Lift one leg, tilt the pelvis back if you need to. Zip and lengthen the spine, float the other leg up. Hold it for five seconds. So during those five seconds, if, if I was able to magically appear in your living room and press down on your belly, I would feel those muscles tight underneath my fingers. Wouldn't I? All right, feet down one at a time. So what I want you to avoid, I'll do it wrong to show you what I mean if you're not getting what I mean. When you bring the second leg up, sometimes we try and use the lower back and we push out or we push the belly out in order to try and contract to get the leg off the floor. I need you to lengthen the spine and just sit the centre so it looks exactly the same. Because this is our base move. When we've got this one right, all the moves that we do after these single leg kick, scissors, double leg kick, they all start from a good foundation. Feet down, have a quick stretch. Then we're going to take that into single leg kick. So we're going to move the arm, move the leg. I'll start with level one, I'll build to level two. So relax the shoulders. Feet flat on the floor, toes pointing forward, knees hip distance apart. Float your right leg up, 90 degrees. Float your left hand up. So fingers pointing up to the ceiling, hand just over the shoulder. Zip and lengthen the centre. Then you're going to push the right leg out until the knees are about level, sort of a 45 angle. Pull the arm back to the side of your head. Square the shoulders, the ribs. Tense the thigh muscles. Press down a little bit through your, through your bent leg, through your foot. And stay here for five seconds. Bring the arm and leg back to centre and down to the floor. Remember your transition, don't wobble. Set your weight. Same on the other side, so lift the leg to knee fold, float the arm up, check the shoulders and hips are square, lengthen and zip the centre, push the leg out, pull the arm back. Check the shoulders, ribs, hips are all level, your weight is centred, hold for five seconds. Tense the thigh on the straight leg, push down a little bit on your bent leg on your foot, feel your bum muscles tighten. We'll do one more on that level. And we transition, so float the leg up, float the arm up, square up, kick out. Don't hang from this hip joint, tense the thigh, so you're pulling the knee as if you're pulling on a tight pair of trousers. You pull the knee up, you can pull the toes towards the knee if you want to, press down on the other leg, really feel that you're holding through your muscles. Pull the shoulder back and down on the arm. in, transition, last one, float up, square up, kick out, tense the thigh, pull the toes back, square the shoulders, Benny that's really not helping, <laughs> this is how you do down dog, should you need to see, <laughs> unfortunately we're not on that one at the moment, <laughs> and have a quick rest, have a quick rest while I sort the grey out, I think he wants to go out, <laughs> oh dear, my palm goes for that view you just had. <laughs> right, uh, where were we? Right, double, <laughs> double leg. <laughs> I've, lost me. I've lost the plot now completely. Right, level two. So level two, we come to double knee fold. Relax the shoulders and we bring both arms up. So you've got no support from the floor now other than through the core. You're going to have to work a lot harder. So it's just the same, kick the right leg forward, pull the left arm back now, square your shoulders, square your hips. You're going to have to use these thigh muscles now because you can't push down into the floor with your other leg. If you're finding holding for five seconds now is just too long, especially if you're feeling your back, just reduce the hold. So when you're ready, you bring the arm and leg back in, square up, zip, lengthen, opposite arm. Pull the shoulder back and down on that arm. 
Zip the centre and tense the thigh on the leg. Threw me completely. I don't have this in the class, do I? You know, you lot can be some trouble sometimes, but none of you standing in front of me doing <laughs> doing down dog asking to go out. I've never had that in the class yet. Good. Back in. Last time. Arm and leg out. Square the shoulders, hips. Try and lengthen along the floor as if you're pushing down as little as possible, floating along that mat. Marvellous. And put your feet down, hug your knees into your chest if you want to. Some people prefer to lift the hips a couple of times. We're going to do hip lifts in a minute just to release that pressure. I'm going to do a double leg kick. If you've got any lower back issues, it might be a step too far, in which case you can repeat what we just did, have a rest, move the video on to hip lifts, whatever suits you. You're going to be able, have to be able to do double um, knee fold anyway for it, so that might decide whether you're going to do it. Just a little bit extra for those who, who can. So you're going to come up to double knee fold, slight tilt back on the pelvis, so you reduce the curve in your back and bring the legs together. Arms down by your shoulder, sides, shoulders relax. Press the legs together and then move them forward together. So you're straightening at the knee now. Go up towards the wall and the ceiling where they meet, that point on your, in your room. Squeeze the centre, squeeze your belly and then bring your knees back to knee fold. So as your legs move out, they're going to be heavier to hold and I want you to feel that you're contracting the abdominals just to hold the weight of the legs. Tense the thighs, press them together, it'll be easier, and pull them back in. Good. Starting at knee fold, so 90 degrees, you push out with the legs until they're straighter, and I would go up to where the wall and the ceiling meet, and pull them back in. You want to have as little arch in your back for this one as you can. I'm not going to say flatten into the floor because I can't. I, I just don't, there's too much curve in my back for that ever to happen without me lifting my shoulders. But I want you to feel that you're not pre, you're not contracting and uh, overarching your lower back. Suck your belly in. Good. Couple more. You can feel the extra weight, can't you? Two legs, not one leg. That's the point. One more, extend the legs, press them together, relax the shoulders. Good, put your feet down. Now we're ready for hip lifts. If you have got a block underneath your head, take it away. Relax the shoulders, feet flat to the floor. Now, make sure your feet are close enough that you can push down into your foot without cramping the back of your leg. So a couple of experimental ones first. When you're happy, knees hip distance apart or maybe a little bit closer and the feet maybe a little bit closer and then lift your hips off the floor and down. Now your first couple, especially if you have got quite tight around the hips, the first couple are just to stretch the front of the hips. So don't worry if you don't come up very far. What I don't want you to do is tilt the pelvis back or forward so it stays neutral. So up. And down. As you start to feel that loosening the hips, make sure your shoulders are well away from your ears, so pull them down. And then lift up and gently press down on the base of your shoulders and on the soles of your feet. And that will let you lift yourself a bit higher. And down. So you're starting to stretch the front of the hips and really use your bone muscles to push you up. Lift up. Now when that feels a bit easier, stay in your neutral, so squeeze your bum and your belly, hold that neutral position, take your hands off the floor, lift your hands up to the ceiling and bring your arms back so your fingers touch the floor behind you. Now if, that's in your, if you're feeling that in your lower back, what might have happened is you've tilted your pelvis forward as you've gone up. So come back down and try it again. I need you to make sure when you lift, you've still got a straight line down the front of your body. Almost like you're trying to tuck your bum underneath you while you're up there. Lift your arms up and back. Keep pushing down through the shoulders and the feet and lift the hips. 
arms back up to the ceiling and actively use your hands, push the air into the floor as you lower down. Get some work out your shoulders. Try not to slide along your mat. If you run out of mat, what you're actually doing is you go up. Rather than lifting your hips, you're just moving backwards. So try and ground down through your shoulders and your feet. So you are getting that front stretch in the hips. Check the knees haven't drifted apart. Keep, them fa keep the thighs facing forward like parallel lines and then float the arms. Check the pelvis is still neutral. Arms up, push the floor down. We're going to do one more. Reset what needs resetting. When you're ready, lift your hips. Get your weight in your shoulders and your feet. Lift yourself up. Float your arms. Back to the ceiling. And as you lower your hips, you push your arms into the floor. Lovely. Draw your knees into your chest. Smash it. Right. What's the next on my lift? I think we've got to sit up now. So hands at the back of the legs and roll yourself up. Or put your hands on the floor and roll onto one side and come up. If you've got your hands on the back of your legs, as you kick your legs forward, bring your shoulders off the floor. And we're up. Grab a quick drink. And we'll do some sitting work. Now, sitting can be uncomfortable. Sitting on the floor. So sit on a cushion if you want to. Or come up onto your knees like we did in the previous class. We quite a bit of work on the knees in the previous one. So you can do that instead if you want. But get yourself comfortable. You can sit cross-legged if that suits you. If it doesn't, find a position that does. You might, I quite like crossing the ankles, that kind of feels comfortable for me, but find a position that's right for you. Reach your head for the ceiling and roll your shoulders back. Now, I need you to think about not dropping into your lower body, so you're lifting up. I always like that idea of sitting up in some water. You've got to keep your chin out of the water. Put your one hand behind you, I'm using my right hand, and your thumbs about lined up with your spine, and you turn in that direction. So I've got my right hand behind me, which means I'm turning to the right. And I can feel my back muscles working. I'm just easing my chest forward slightly and pulling my shoulder down. Lovely. And then I'm going to come back, still keeping my chin out of the water, change the side. So my left hand goes behind me. I start to turn in that direction. And I can feel my back muscles working. My chest is lifted. My head's out of the water. And I come back. So now, when we were lying down, we were twisting the hips and keeping the shoulders still. Doing the opposite now, keeping the hips still, twisting the shoulders. So I really want you to use those muscles in your upper spine. Keep gently pressing the chest forward. Hand can come across your lap just to give you a bit of leverage, but mind you, don't pull your knee into the centre because that's going to aggravate any sciatica. So it's just there as a little bit of lever, something to lean on. As you twist, keep using these back muscles to keep you up. You're going to make your back stronger, so when you're sitting, you're not going to get that forward slump that encourages sciatica and tight hips. You're going to be up nice and straight. I want you to pretend that you're sticking your bum out, so feel it's kind of like pushing out through your hips, through your bum, like you tell that tail is sticking out behind you. Need Benny here now to demo, but he's gone. Just can't get the stuff these days. I think he's sick of the sight of me. I've been in the house far too long now. He wants me to go away. <laughs> he wants the house back to himself once more. Good. And then we're going to do our forward and our, our beetle and angel for some flexion. So reset what needs resetting. Now you're going to let your back go into a C shape now. So you're going to tuck your chin in slightly and round your spine. Let your weight sit on your legs. Let your arms sit on your leg to support your weight. So you're tucking your tailbone under slightly, tightening your belly a little bit, and getting a nice C shape in your back. Then you're going to pull yourself up. So stack from that tailbone all the way up to the crown of your head, build your spine up. You've got two options then. You can either put your fingers behind you and press your chest forward, or take your arms out and squeeze your shoulder blades together. 
see which suits you better. Now on to, to round the spine, tuck your chin in and you feel that it's almost like you're trying to press the middle of your back out. So you're making a nice hollow in, in the centre and a C shape with your back. So all these vertebrae in your back just open out slightly, tailbone tries to tuck under and then you restack. So you pull your spine up straight, pull your shoulders back and down and then either hands behind you, chest forward or arms out. If you've got your arms out, you're pulling your shoulders back and down and pressing your chest forward. Trying to arch your spine a little bit. Once more, then relax forward. Maybe you can do this kneeling or hands and knees if you find this seating one doesn't suit you. Pull yourself up and I want you to think as you lift up, just get your chin out of that water. Zip up to hold your weight and then arms out or arms behind you. Lovely and relax. Don't stoop, just relax. <laughs> you said relax. Right, we're going to work the leg muscles a little bit. We're going to start by lifting the leg and then I'm going to move it into a V-sit for those who want it. So with your legs straight, hands just behind you for a bit of support but don't lean back. So shoulders and hips lined up. You're going to try and just lift one foot off the floor. If it's really difficult for you to do, try bending one leg and then lifting the other leg. Might be easier. But I want you to really use your thigh muscles. You're not going to lift a long way because I want you to think about keeping your chest up, keeping your back straight and using these leg muscles. It's quite a powerful move. So stay with this. If you've got any lower back problems or you just find the next move just isn't for you. But we're going to try V-sit for those who can. So you're going to start with your feet on the floor, shoulders back and down. And throughout this move, I want you to think about lifting your chest. There's no dropping down into the floor. So keep lifting your chest up, shoulders down. With your hands behind your legs, chin just out of the water. You're going to lift your right foot off the floor and bring it to your knee fold. And then down. You're lifting, using your thigh muscles to pull the leg up. And as your leg comes up, your chest stays up. So you're not dropping away from this leg. So we're making a V shape in our body. Now for the next bit, you're going to have to lean back slightly, but I want to arch your back. So you're just moving your shoulders back a little bit. Think about making that V. You lift your right leg up, tense, pull your shoulders down, Reach your head out of the water, lean back just slightly and float your leg up. Still holding onto your legs, so you're pulling your legs and your chest together. And then down and sit back up. So you've lifted the one leg and just lean back a little way, but tighten your belly so you're not feeling it in your lower back. Lift the other leg. Use your thigh muscles to hold you up and think about bringing your knees and your chest, keeping them together. And down, you know where we're going, don't you? If you can now, we're going to let go of the legs. So we're going to come up the same, hands at the back of the legs to start. So bring the leg up, lean back just slightly, bring the other leg up. Keep thinking about pulling your chest and your knees together and let go of the legs. Just let your hands sit either side of your knees. Hold it for five, four, three, everything's shaking, two, one, down. How's that feel? If you felt it in your lower back, you don't need me to tell you that's not right. So either go back to the straight leg lifting or just one foot off the floor. But we're going to have another go if we can. So sit up nice and straight. Abdominals in, chest lifted, head out of the water. Float your right leg up, lean your shoulders back just slightly. Bring your left leg up. Think about pulling knees and chest together. Right hand off, left hand off, breathe. Five, four, three, two, one, and down. And rest. Well done. Onto your hands and knees. <laughs> That's a tough one, isn't it? Onto your hands and knees. And a little bit of circling around. Just get your breath back after that one. <laughs> okay. Into our cat and cow. So we're going to get a little bit more work out of the shoulders and the wrists. But as always, if your wrists are sore, try putting your hands on a block or cushions just to lift your hands a bit higher. Or 
or you can go back and do some more seated work if you want to, a beetle and angel. Otherwise, hands underneath the shoulders, pull your belly button up towards your spine, tuck your bum under, tuck your chin. So you're making that C shape for your back like you do when you're sitting down. Straighten out to neutral. Pull your shoulders back and down and press your chest forward and arch down your spine, sticking your bum out, sticking your chest out. Level up and repeat. Now think of working from the tailbone all the way up to the nape of the neck. When you've made your C shape, push down into the heels of your hands and pull your hips towards you. You'll feel your belly tighten. And then level out. And then think about arching your back. We're going to start that from the top of the spine. So I want you to pull your shoulders back and down so your neck feels longer. Push down and pull back with your hands and push your chest forward and then arch down to your tailbone. Really think about using your upper back. It's the part of the spine that we really struggle to extend. So that's where we want to work on this one. And then level up again. So for most of us, rounding the spine, we overwork the upper back because that's used to being flexed. So with your, with your cat, I want you to think about pulling your tailbone under and really contract your belly. So the lower back is getting to stretch. It's not just from your shoulders rounding. And you can push down into the floor to widen across your upper back as well. And then when you level out, find your neutral. Pull your shoulders back and down so your neck feels long. Push down and pull back with your hands and push your chest forward between your arms. And then sticking your bum out for most of us feels quite easy. I'm generalising. Okay, we're going to add the knee hovers into the middle of that one. So once you've done your two cat and cows, you come back to neutral, feet flat or toes tucked, push down into your hands and lift your knees about an inch off the floor. Use your arms, push down into your hands. Feel these upper arm muscles working. Hold it for five seconds. And put your feet down into your cat and cow, whichever order you like. I tend to do, well, I get, I get confused, but I start with cat and then go into cow, but you might do it the other way. Come back to neutral and your weight needs to be in your arms. So you push down into your hands, feel your upper body wake up and then your knees spring off the floor Push down into your arms for five, four, three, two, one, and down. And then the cat and cow become a nice chance to get your breath back. Make sure you come back to neutral. So it's teaching you where neutral is. So when you press down into your arms to lift your knees, you're not hunching or sticking your butt out. You're in your neutral, your belly tightens, you push down and you lift your knees for your count of five. We'll do that once more. Cat, cow, neutral, push and lift. Five, four, three, two, pushing those hands, one, and rest. Then we're going to come forward and back, which again will feel quite nice. So bring your hands further forward. You're going to come into three quarter plank. So you bring your weight forward onto your hands, but keep your spine long. Don't drop into those hips. Pull your belly in and you're pushing your hands into the floor a little bit to stop you dropping down to the mat. Then back up onto your hands and knees and move your hips back towards your feet. You can bring your hands with you if you need to for a little bit and feel a nice stretch in your back. To start with, we're just moving. So we're going to come forward into plank, three quarter plank. Tuck the tailbone under, push down into the arms, hold it for a second or two, then up and back. So it's a bit of strength and it's a bit of mobility. In a minute, we're going to come more into the strength. I knew you'd like that. So one more, hold it for a couple of seconds in plank. And then up and back. Now I want to stay in plank a little bit longer if you can. If you can't, carry on as you're doing now, but otherwise come forward into your plank. Relax the shoulders down, push the floor away with your arms and keep your hips away from the floor. Tuck your toes, 
Now straighten your right leg so your knee leaves the floor and push down through your heel as if you're trying to get your heel to touch the floor. Push down into your arms a little bit more and do the same with your left leg. So both knees off the floor. Now really push your weight through to your heels. Push the floor over your arms for five, four, three, two, one. Knees down, sit back and stay there for just a little bit longer. Get your breath back. Have another go if you can. If it's not for you, stay on the knees like we did before, but otherwise come forward again. Push the floor over your arms. Keep your hips lifted away from the floor. Tuck your toes. Straighten your right leg and push through your heel. Push down into your arms a little bit more. Keep your hips up. Do the same with your left leg. Push those heels towards the floor. Push your head towards the ceiling for five, four, three, two, one. Down with the knees, back with the hips. And then try it once more. If that's enough, if you do a strength work more than you can, then your body will drop into a shape that's more likely to get injured. If that's enough, that's enough. Otherwise, come to three quarter plank again, push the floor away, lift the hips, tuck the toes, straighten the right leg. Push through the floor, straighten the left leg. Really push through your heels and through the top of your head and keep yourself lifted from that floor for five, four, three, two, one, down, sit back. Nice one, we're going to do a nice stretch while we're here. So now we've got our arms out in front, take your right hand off the floor, turn it over and just slide it in the gap under your left arm, sort of towards your armpit. So you bring your right shoulder down towards the floor and see if you can look through that gap. So I want you to feel your shoulders have twisted, but your hips haven't, your hips are still square to the floor. And change sides. So right hand reaches forward in front, left hand comes through the gap. So that's threading the needle. You're kind of threading into that gap with your armpit. You're trying to see through it. So you're trying to bring your left shoulder to the floor without moving your hips. Lengthen your spine, send your tailbone towards your feet. And back. And into that once more. So you're reaching through that rotation again. <laughs> Try and have your feet flat if you can. So you're feeling a nice stretch in front of your ankle while you're at it. Reach on this on this straight arm. See if you can just creep it a bit further forward. And on your threaded arm, see if you can just creep it underneath a little bit more. And last time, the left hand comes through the gap, push your hips back, so you're sending your threaded arm, you're sending the shoulder down to the floor, having a look through the gap. Creep this straight arm a little bit further forward. And come back, lovely. Okay, I've got one more straight one for you to do, and it is a tough one. We're going to rotate the hips, so we're going to get the side ones working. It does need you to be able to do that full plank. So if it's not for you, you can have a rest or you can stay up on your knees and do your spine twisting. So you're still getting these obliques working without the weight in the wrists and the shoulders. So remember that one, shoulders down, up on your knees and twisting, keeping your hips still. The rest of you, from your hands and knees, bring your hands forward, come to your three quarter plank, Tuck your toes, push through the floor, straighten your right leg, straighten your left leg. Now lift your hips just slightly higher so they're about level with the back of your shoulders. We're not in pike, we're not up here, but they're just that little bit higher. Now I want to, with your right leg, take the weight off your right foot, bend your knee and bring it towards your left elbow. So there's a little twist. And back. What? Say what to Sharon. So you're bringing your knee in towards you, but it's twisting towards your opposite elbow. And back. You need your hips slightly higher. Keep pushing down through the floor. So take your right, right knee off, right foot off the floor. Start to bring it forward and then twist it towards your left elbow. 
and back. It's tough, isn't it? So I want those hips to rotate so it comes forward slightly and then twists. Push down into your hands. Back. One more. Bring it through slightly and twist. Send your hip down. Keep your shoulders lifted. And back. Last one. Bring it through and twist. And back. And sit back. <laughs> you know how well that's going to go in class, don't you? Sit back into your child's pose. Breathe. Bring yourself down onto your belly and just stretch the lower back and the abdominals out and we're done. So hands about shoulder level, maybe a bit further forward. Use your back muscles to lift your chest off the floor. Gently press down through your pelvis, tighten your legs, lift yourself up and put yourself down. That's made me sweat. <laughs> so hands, they're either a shoulder level or a bit further forward, but I want you to use your back muscles to lift you up. Now that's sort of a cobra snake that lifts itself up to hiss at you. Lift up. If you tense your legs and your bum, they will help give you a bit of support as you lift up. So try not to push too hard with your arms. Your arms have just done some work. Use your upper back muscles to lift you up. It stretches the abdominals. Gets your bum muscles working, so it stretches the hip flexors. Good. One more. Pull yourself up. Relax the shoulders down away from your ears. Really use these back muscles to lift you up. Smashing. And then bring yourself, put your hands about level with your shoulders, push down, bring yourself up onto your hands and knees. Walk your hands just in front of your knees, tuck your toes under, push down into your hands and walk back onto the soles of your feet. And then slowly come up, head comes up last. We've been down on the floor for an hour. Don't come up too quickly. If you do suddenly start to feel a bit lightheaded, pull your head down again. Once you're up, roll the shoulders back. Nice big shoulder rolls. Good. Just turn sideways so you can see my shoulders moving. Suck your abdominals in. Tailbone points down. Doesn't stick out behind you. Gives you a flat tummy as well, that. So worth remembering. Bring your arms up. And out to really stretch the sharp chest muscles, feel the shoulder blades sliding together and down your back. Really lift out of those hips. One more. Put your right hand on your right hip and turn and look over that shoulder. Keep your hips square. Then come back. Same on the side. So left hand on the hip, keep your hips square, turn and look over that shoulder. I want to make sure the hip doesn't move with you. So the shoulder's moved, hip hasn't. And you do that again. You can use the hands if you want to, just to remind the hip that it's not coming with you. Arms out in front, feet wider, toes facing forward. Ski. That's the only skin you're going to get this year, my mate. Right, so sit back, pull yourself up, a little back bend. Sit down, don't do that when you go skiing, you'll take somebody's eye out. So you sit back, pull the elbows together, sit the hips back, drive up. Nice back bend. Now, sometimes in the class, what I see for a squat is actually this. There's no leg bend. Make sure you bend your knees when you sit back and drive up, a couple more, sit down, remember public toilets, hover, pull the elbows together, press the chest forward, then drive up, and a nice back bend, and bring your arms down. Right, shoulder rolls, I better leave it there for I think of another load of exercises for you to do. So shoulders relaxed and down, arms down by your side, feet hip distance apart for balance, engage across your back. And I think we're about done. Thank you very much for watching again. Keep sending me your comments. It's really nice to hear from you. I know you're all still out there. Keep safe. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.